Hello and welcome to the Bible with Briscoe 2022. I am your messenger of the Word of God, Shenandoah Briscoe, and today we're going to be covering 2 Samuel 23 through 24 and Luke 19, 1 through 27. Father, I just ask for clarity of voice and articulation so that the reading of your word will be a blessing to you and for all of those who have tuned in from all around the world. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. And they all said, amen. David's latest words. 2 Samuel 23. These are the latest words of David, the inspired utterance of David, son of Jesse the utterance of the man exalted by the Most High, the man anointed by the God of Jacob, the hero of Israel's songs. The Spirit of the Lord spoke through me. His words was on my tongue. The God of Israel spoke. The Rock of Israel said to me, When one rules over people in righteousness, when he rules in the favor of God, he is like the light of the morning at sunrise, on a cloudless morning, like the brightness after rain that brings grass from the earth. If my house were not right with God, surely he would not have made me made with me an everlasting covenant. Arranged and secured in every part, surely he would not bring to fruitation my salvation and grant me my every desire but evil men and are all to be cast aside like thorns which are not gathered with the hand whoever touches thorns uses a tool of iron or the shaft of a spear they are burned up where they lie. David's Mighty Warriors. These are the names of David's mighty warriors. Josheb Beshebeth, a Thekelite Monite, was chief of the three of the three, and he raised his spear against eight hundred men whom he killed in one encounter. Next to him was Eliezer, son of Dodii, the Ahachite. As one of the three mighty warriors, he was with David when they taunted the Philistines, gathered at Pasadomian for battle, and then the Israelites retreated, but Eliezer stood his ground and struck down the Philistines till his hand grew tired and froze to the sword. The Lord brought about a great victory that day, and the troops returned to Eliezer, but only to strip the dead. Next to him was Shamaha, son of Agi, the Heretite. When the Philistine banded together at a place where there was a field full of lentils, Israel's troops fled from them. But Shamaha took his stand in the middle of the field, and he defe- defended it and struck the Philistines down, and the Lord brought about a great victory. During harvest time, three of the thirty chief warriors came down to David at the cave of Adullam, while a band of Philistines were encamped in the valley of Rephaim. At that time, David was in the stronghold, and the Philistine garrison was at Bethlehem. David long, longed for water and said, Oh, that someone would get me a drink of water from the well near the gates of Bethlehem. And so three mighty warriors broke through the Philistine lines, drew water from the well near the gate of Bethlehem, and carried it back to David. But he refused to drink it. Instead, he poured it out before the Lord. 
far be it for me, the Lord, to do this. Far be it from me, Lord, to do this, he said. And then, uh, it is not the blood of men who went at the risk of their lives, and David would not drink it. Such were the exploits of three mighty warriors. Abishai, the brother of Joab, son of Zore, was chief of the three. Now he raised his spear against three hundred men whom he killed, and so he became as famous as the three. Was he not held in greater honor than the three? He became their commander, even though he was not included among them. Benahi, son of Jeho- Jehodiah, a valiant fighter from Kebazil, performed great exploits. He struck down Moab's two mightiest warriors. He also went down into a pit on a snowy day and killed a lion. And he struck down a huge Egyptian, although the Egyptians had a spear in his hand, Benai, in his hand, Benai went against him with a club. He snatched the spear from the Egyptian's hand, and he killed him with his own spear. Such were the exploits of Benai, uh, son of Jehodiah. He too was a famous was as famous as the three mighty warriors. He was held in greater honor than any of the thirty, but he was not included among the three. And David put him in charge of his bodyguards. Among the thirty were Ashel, the brother of Joab, Elahan, son of Dudu, from Bethlehem, Shema the Horodite, Elika the Horodite, Hel- Helaza the Peliect, Ira son of Ikisha from Teko, Abizer from Anathoth, Sibiak the Cushathite, Zalman the Achalahite, Maharai, the Notothlite, uh, Helid, son of Ben, the Netophlite, Itha, son of Rabbi, from Gala, uh, from Gibeah, and Benjamin, Benai, the Parathonite, Hadia, from the ravines of Gash, Abi Alban, uh, the Abarthite, Asmerbar, Asmer, I'm sorry, Asmerbeth, the Burmite, Elahaba, the Shalabanite, the son of Jeshin, Jonathan, uh, the sons of Jeshin, Jeshin. Jonathan, son of Shema the Heretite, uh, Ahaman, son of Sharar the Heretite, Elephet, son of Ahashbahai the Mechathite, Elam, son of Ethophel the Gilanite, Hezer, the Carmelite, Perai, the Arbite, Igel, son of Nathan, from Zoba, the son of Hegarai, Ze- Zelik, the Ammonite, Naharai, the Berothelite, the arm- armor bearer of Joab, son of Zerai, Ira, the Itharite, Jerob the Itharite, and Uriah the Hittite. They, uh, there were 37 in all. David enrolls the fighting men. 2 Samuel 24 
Again, the anger of the Lord burned against Israel, and he in, incited David against them, saying, Go and take a census of Israel and Judea. And so the king said to Joab and the army commanders with him, Go throughout the tribes of Israel from Dan to Beersheba and enroll the fighting men so that I may know how many there are. But Joab replied to the king, May the Lord your God multiply the troops a hundred times over, and may the eyes of my lord the king see it. But why does my lord the king want to do such a thing? The king's word, however, overruled Joab and the army commanders, and so they left the presence of the king to enroll the fighting men of Israel. After crossing the Jordan, they camped near Arar, south of the town in the gorge, and then went through Gad and on to Jezer. They went to Gilad and to the region of Tithium, Hodashi, and on to Dan, Janan, and around towards Sidon. Then they went towards the fortress of Tyre and all the towns of the Hivites and Canaanites. Finally, they went on to Beersheba in the Negev of Judea. After they had gone through the entire land, they came back to Jerusalem at the end of nine months and twenty days. Joab reported the number of the fighting men to the king in Israel, and there were eight hundred thousand able-bodied men who could handle a sword, and in Judea five hundred thousand. And David was con uh, David was conscious stricken after he had counted the fighting men and he said to the Lord I have sinned greatly in what I have done now Lord I beg you take away the guilt of your servant I have done a very foolish thing before David got up the next morning the word of the Lord had come to Gad the prophet David's seer Go and tell David, this is what the Lord says. I am giving you three options. Choose one of them for me to carry out against you. And so Gad went to David, and he said to him, Shall there come on you three years of famine in your land, or three months of fleeing from your enemies while, you, while they pursue you, or three days of plague in your land. Now then, think it over and decide how I should answer the one who sent me. Well, David said to Gad, I am in deep distress. Let us fall into the hands of the Lord, for his mercy is great. But do not let me fall into human hands. And so the Lord sent a plague on Israel, from that morning until the end of three uh, of the time designated, and seventy two or seventy thousand of the people from Dan to Beersheba died. And when the angel stretched out his hand to destroy Jerusalem, the Lord relented concerning the disaster and said to the angel who was afflicting the people, Enough. Withdraw your hand. The angel of the Lord was then at the threshing floor of Ar Aruna, and the the Jez the Jebuz 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 And when David saw the angel who was striking down the people, he said to the Lord, "I have sinned. I, the shepherd, have done wrong." These are but sheep. What have they done? Let your hand fall on me and my family. David builds an offer. altar. On that day, Gad went to David and said to him, Go up 
and build an altar to the Lord on the thrashing floor of Aharna the Jebezuit. And so David went up, as the Lord had commanded, through Gad. And when Ahura looked, and he saw the king and his officials coming towards him, he went out and bowed down before the king with his face to the ground. Ahura said, Why has my lord the king come to his servant? To buy your threshing floor, David answered, so I can build an altar to the Lord, that the plague on the people may be stopped. Arana said to David, Let my lord the king take whatever he wishes and offer it up. Here are oxen for the burnt offerings, and here are the thrashing sledges and ox yokes for the wood. Your majesty Arana gives all this to the king. Arana also said to him, May the Lord your God accept you. But the king replied to uh, Arana, No, I insist on paying for it, uh, and paying you for it. I will not sacrifice to the Lord my God burnt offerings that cost me nothing. And so David bought the threshing floor and the oxen, and he paid fifty shekels of silver for them. And David built an altar to the Lord there, and he sacrificed the burnt offerings and fellowship offerings. The, and then the Lord answered his prayers in behalf of the land, and the plague on Israel was stopped. That was Second Samuel 23 through 24. Now we will be turning to Luke 19, 1 through 27. Luke 19, 1 through 27. Uh, Zacchaeus, the tax collector. Luke 19. Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through a um, and was passing through. A man was there by the name of Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was wealthy. He wanted to see who Jesus was, but because he was short, he could not see over the crowd. And so he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore fig tree to see him, and since Jesus was coming that way. When Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and he said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. And so he came down at once, and he welcomed him gladly. All the people saw this and began to mutter, he, he's gone, he has gone to be the guest of a sinner. But Zacchaeus stood up, and he said to the Lord, Look, Lord, here and now I give half of my possessions to the poor, and I have cheated, and if I have cheated anyone out of anything, I will be, I will pay them back four times that amount. Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because this man too is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. The parable of the ten minia. Menace. While they were listening to this, he went on to tell them a parable because he was near Jerusalem and the people th thought that the kingdom of God was going to appear at once. He said, A man of noble birth went to a distant country to have himself appointed king and then to return. And so he called ten of his servants and gave them ten minutes. Put this money to work, he said, until I come home. Now, but his subjects hated him, and they sent a delegation after him to say, 
we do not want this man to be our king. He was made king, however, and returned home. Then he sent for the servants to whom he had given the money, in order to find out what they had gained with it. The first one came, and he said, Sir, your uh, manna has earned ten more. And well done, my good servant, his master replied, because you have been trustworthy in a very small matter. Take charge of ten cities. The second came and said, Sir, your manna has earned five more. His master answered, You take charge of the five cities. Then another servant came and said, Sir, here is your manna. I have kept it laid away in a piece of cloth. I was afraid of you because I, you are a hard man. You take out what you did not put in, and reap where you, what you did not sow. His master replied, I will judge you by your own words, you wicked servant. You knew, did you, that I am a hard man, taking of, uh, out what I did not put in, and reaping what I did not sow? Why then didn't you put my money on deposit? so that when I came back, I could have collected it with interest. And then he said to those standing by, Take his manna away from him, and give it to the one who has ten minas. Sir, they said, he already has ten. He replied, I tell you that everyone who has more will be given less. Uh, but... As for the one who has nothing, even what they have will be taken away. But those en enemies of mine who did not want me to be king over them, bring them here and kill them in front of me. And that was Luke 19, 1 through 27, which concludes the Bible with Briscoe 2022 for today. Tomorrow we will be covering 1 Kings 1 through 2 and Luke 19, 28 through 48. Father, I just thank you for your word because if it were not, uh, because if your word was not available, I could not be your messenger of the word. So I give you all the praise and all the glory in Jesus' mighty name, amen. And they all said, amen. Thank you, folks, for tuning in to the Bible with Briscoe 2022 for today. I, Shenandoah Briscoe, have enjoyed being your messenger of the Word of God. And as always, you know, God loves you, and so do I. So be blessed and come back and see us tomorrow because God will and will be here. And we hope that you are too.